Um, it's really great, and thank you to Karina for inviting us to um, to talk to you today. Um, as Karina mentioned, um, normally I'm resident in NUI Galway and have done quite a bit of work with Karina over the years. Um, but for the last two years, um, I have been actually almost exactly to the day, Karina. It was the 7th of May when I started with the IUA in 2019. Um, so almost exactly two years um, on the Enhancing Digital Teaching and Learning project. Um, I'm going to speak just a little bit about the project just to give some context and then I'm going to hand over to the students, which is brilliant because Karina knows this almost three weeks ago. I had a little bit of an accident and um, very nearly fell down the stairs, but I've managed to damage my right arm, which is my my prominent arm. So I'll just stand up and you can see it's all completely strapped up. Um, I am I am depending on um, I'm depending on um, dictation software at the moment and a lot of pain relief. So um, I would be very happy to hand over to um, my student partners very shortly. Um, so yeah, so we're going to talk about student partnership, which is one aspect of our project, which has, has particularly gained in prominence, I would say, since um, the events of March 2020. Um, so joining me today, um, I have got four fantastic students um, who are going to be talking about different aspects of the partnership. So today's speaker is Sharon, that's me. Um, you don't, you're not really interested in me at all. It's the, the other four you'll be interested in. So um, actually in alphabetical order, because I couldn't figure out any better order to use, we have uh, Ben from Trinity College. We have Katharina from Maynooth and Michaela, who is also a student intern in Maynooth. And we've got Rory, who is our IUA student intern. And I'll explain a little bit about the setup very shortly. So let me just give a tiny bit of background to the project. So as Karina mentioned, the Enhancing Digital Teaching and Learning Project is funded through the HEA Innovation and Transformation Programme. Um, it started um, in January 2019. I came on board in May 2019. Um, it was originally a three year funded project, but we we have been notified that we we um, have been extended now to September 2022, which is brilliant. Um, the overall aim is to enhance the digital attributes and educational experiences of Irish university students. So you'll see along the top there the logos of the seven universities of the IUA. Um, uh, but the the intention originally certainly was to mainstream digital teaching and learning activities in the universities by addressing professional development of staff who teach or who support teaching and learning. Um, so while the high level aim was all around student and student experience, um, actually the way that we were approaching it was very much through staff development. Um, so year one, essentially, um, we spent a lot of time building up a team. Um, and this photograph, which looks almost odd now because we can't imagine getting you know, a group and standing together so close like this anymore. But this photograph was taken at the project launch, which took place in November of 2019. And it shows some, not quite all, of the team members. So essentially the funding from the HEA, the majority of it, was used to recruit people and um, staff resources in each of the seven universities and the seven universities each one had their own um i suppose autonomy in terms of how they managed that recruitment whether it meant recruiting one quite senior person or maybe two half-time people or what you know it was essentially up to themselves so we've got a great team of people and that um, never underestimate how long it takes to recruit a team, um, especially when you've got seven different institutions involved. Um, so that building the team took quite a while. And in fact, the, the last staff team member only started in January of 2020. So um, it, it did take a, a bit of time to build up that team. Now, what's interesting in that photograph, and you may well recognize some of the people in that photograph, but if you look at the um, extreme left, there is a young man there um, and his name is Vish Gain, and he was actually our first student intern. Um, I'll be talking about him again in a moment, but um, I think that was maybe his, his second day on the job. Um, so he was thrilled to be involved um, in the launch of the project and 
and it was a great opportunity for him to meet all of the team because obviously the team is distributed right around the country from Dublin, Cork, um, Maynooth, Limerick, Galway. Um, you know, it's it's very much a distributed team. So um, the team members, just to give you a sense, um, the, the team members there in the sort of green colour um, are the staff team members, but you'll notice that we've got quite a lot of names in black and the names in black are our student team members. And four of them are with us today. Um, very early on in the project, and I won't bore you with, with some of the early work that we did, but we defined four pillars for the project. And we said that these, in trying to determine a vision for the project, these were going to be our guiding principles, if you like. I'll just run them through them very quickly. The first one is the not starting from zero. That was referring to the fact that um, there was already a lot of excellent work that had been going on in each of our partner universities, um, you know, over the last 10, 15 years in terms of building up digital capacity. So we wanted to ensure that we would build on that rather than ignoring it and trying to come in fresh or anew. The second pillar is that we wanted to ensure we had a pedagogy first approach, which meant we weren't focusing on tools and technologies. We couldn't do that anyway, to be honest with you, because we've got seven universities and across the seven universities, for example, there are five different flavours of VLE. So there was never going to be a consistent set of tools across the seven universities that just couldn't happen. So we actually it, that worked to our advantage. We had to focus on the teaching and learning and let the technology follow the pedagogy or support the pedagogy. Our third pillar was the, the discipline focus, and this was the, the idea that we would try where possible to work with, say, programme teams or groups of staff rather than building up individual champions. And our fourth pillar, which is the one we're talking about today, is we said we wanted to ensure that we worked with students as our partners rather than just seeing students as being, I suppose, the object of our project. And initially, really, the only student involvement we had um, in the project was um, the the um, academic. Um, oh, what's what's the post name? The, the, the VP academic from the USI and um, sits on our steering committee um, and that's Kevin McStravick currently. And Kevin is a great guy. But if we were thinking that he was going to be our student partner, as well as all the other myriad of things that he was doing, um, that, you know, we weren't really doing a service to our students. So having students as real partners um, was something that we we were quite keen on from the very beginning. And so um, I suppose guided a little bit by um, some of the um, some of the, the, the student associates within the National Forum, um, we got approval to recruit um, a student intern. So a, a student who would work on the project part time um, 15 hours a week um, and who would become a full member of the, the project team. So as I mentioned, Vish Gain, who is looking very happy with himself in that photograph there, he's very photogenic actually. Um, he became a member of the project team in November of 2019. Originally, we recruited him for a period of six months, but then of course in March um, with the whole the pivot and the, the working from home, etc. That got extended a little bit and extended a little bit more. So he worked with us from November through to June of 2020. He became a full member of the project team, which meant that he attended all team meetings and he contributed as an equal. And obviously he had a very particular point of view. In fact, Vish is an international student or was an international student at the time and um, was quite new to the Irish higher education system. Um, he was a student of um, journalism um, within DCU, um, which actually made him a very natural choice to become editor of our newsletter. So he became editor of the newsletter from the first issue, which which was in January of 2020. He also um, began to liaise with the various student unions across the seven campuses. That was actually quite a challenge because he was based in Dublin at that time. You know, if you needed to liaise, you still had to travel a little bit. Um, but the student unions themselves, they have got a whole host of things that they want to work on um, and don't always have the time to engage with um, a project like this, no matter how fantastic it might be. And the other thing that he began to do was to contribute to our webinar series. So we have a webinar series which normally takes place um, every second Monday 
on different topics related to teaching and learning. And Vish began to contribute from the student perspective. And he got a lot of really good feedback and we got a lot of insight um, into the student experience through him. And then, of course, um, 12th of March 2020, Leo Varadkar makes the announcement that we are all going to be working and studying from home. Um, so we know what happened. Um, the impact on the project was very significant. Um, originally, we had thought that what we wanted to do was to, I suppose, um, increase the capacity for staff to use digital tools in their teaching. And then suddenly from the 12th of March or the 13th of March, everybody had to use digital tools in their teaching. So in one sense, you could say that um, our project goals were achieved. But on the other hand, we knew that certainly the student digital experience was nowhere near enhanced. Um, and also that um, at that time, and I think particularly just after the pivot, a lot of focus was on how to use the tools, what tools were available, rather than thinking about how best to use the tools for teaching. So we had quite um, a challenge on our hands, and I know Karina will recognise that as well from her perspective. And the team came together and we had a, a sort of a, a, a shift in focus in terms of what we wanted to do and what we wanted to achieve. And our focus over the next number of months became um, planning for a very different um, teaching and learning experience for all in September, because we could tell from very early on, you know, I think back in March 2020, we thought this is going to be over in a couple of weeks. But as the weeks went by and as we we moved into the from the teaching um, period into the assessment period, it became very clear that um, that September was going to be a very different sort of September. So the project team began to focus on preparing staff for that. And, and you may have come across this um, graphic in the past. This was um, this was launched in June 2020, and it was very much around the types of things that staff needed to think about in order to prepare for September. It's still valid today. Um, one thing I'll just point out to you um, is the fact that through our discussions and actually Vish had quite a lot of influence in this as well. We centred the students. So at the centre of our, our planning tool, if you like, was that that green box there which says consider your students. OK, enough about the project that should give you enough of a sense of what um, it's all about and what we were trying to do. Let's talk about our interns. So as I said, um, Vish kind of stayed on for an extra couple of months, but the whole notion of having an intern is that it is a, a fairly short term. It's for a defined period of time. A student gets to work and it is paid, by the way, it's a paid internship. So student, a student gets to work as part of the project, a full member of the project team for a period of time. But eventually we had to look to recruit a new student intern. Um, and that was the time when Rory was appointed and Rory will be talking to you in just a minute. He'll also maybe highlight some of the differences between the work that he does currently and the work that Vish was doing and how he has expanded the role. But when we went to advertise for a new student intern, we realised that there was a very high level of, of interest from students across the country. And the fact that we were working online meant we were no longer limited to having students based in Dublin. Um, and so the idea was born. Why could we not extend the scheme um, to look at having one intern or more in each university? And so once Rory was in place, we set out to recruit other interns, one for each university. And then some universities decided to recruit more than one intern, including Maynooth. Um, and this really demonstrates the project's commitment to student partnership. The student interns are all full members of the project team. They're not required to come to project team meetings because obviously they are students. They're all full time students, um, but they are all welcomed to project team meetings um, and they certainly have a huge role to play. Um, the role that they play is there's a kind of a dual role 
um, in that we were very interested in listening to student voices and I'm deliberately using the plural there. It's not the student voice because we've got a many, many, many different students all with their own different experiences and we want to listen to as many voices as possible. So it was very much around listening to our students, but also reaching out to students because up until then, most of the work we had done was aimed at academic staff. Um, so that's how we managed to recruit 10 student interns. Um, and I have to say that none of the interns have ever met each other in person. All of their work has been virtual over the last almost year. We have um, a diverse set of students. Um, we've got some are postgraduate students, some are undergraduate students, um, and they all come from, from a variety of disciplines. So we, um, we feel very privileged to have our students working with us. So I'm going to let Rory come in. Um, we're going to talk first about um, that kind of reaching out to students piece. Um, because that was Rory's first task really, was to look at how we could communicate directly to students um, rather than just trying to work through staff or trying to work through um, uh, student union. So Rory, would you like to come in for the next slide? And, and just to say, guys, let me know when you want me to advance the slides for you. Perfect. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah, so as Sharon said, I took over from Bish last July and I think since since I took over that role, the role's changed quite a bit just in the context of COVID-19. So, for example, having the student interns in each of the universities, I think, makes the role much more different and it makes it much easier in a lot of ways, just because I can only imagine how difficult it was for Vish to try and kind of have an ear to the ground in each of our member universities. And it's made much easier now, I think, knowing that we have someone in each university who can report back, who can give their perspective on how things are going. So I think in that regard, it just goes to show how well the student intern scheme is working and going forward. Hopefully, something that will remain. So, as Sharon said, that we wanted to put the student at the centre of the EDTL project. And us being students ourselves, we were kind of able to do this just using our own personal experience. So, the first way in which we did this was through the creation of infographics. So, we have our EDTL webinars most weeks live, and we have based the content of these infographics off what we discuss in these webinars. So, there's been three student led webinars so far, and one of them was on online exams. So we decided to kind of condense the information that we brought up during this webinar, which kind of touched on many different topics, such as how to utilize technology online, what to do if there's disruption during an exam, who do you contact, how do you ensure your lecturer knows not to dock your marks or submitting late. So we wanted to make all this information, instead of having it in an hour-long webinar, to condense it into something that maybe students could put up on their wall, that access offices could hand out to students if they needed to when we go back to college. And so in order to do this, we created an infographic. As Sharon said, we, none of student interns have actually ever met, so we had to create this infographic completely virtually, which is grand, I suppose, because it's such as last year, we've all become quite accustomed to working remotely and digitally, so we're able to use Microsoft Office and various online tools to collaborate. But yeah, so this will be the first of our kind of major things we worked on this year. So it's, yes, yeah, so sorry. Yeah, so one of the things we suggested was maybe in the real world to be printed, maybe on mouse mats and distributed students or along those lines, but that never really came to fruition just because it was kept quite remote. So yes, yeah, so that's the infographics. So I might just ask you to move on there, Sharon, please, to the student guides. So these would be another one of the collaborative efforts that each of the student interns contributes to, and these can all be accessed on the edtl.blog website. As Sharon mentioned that even before things went online, there was such a wide variety of resources that universities have created to make students' life easier when it comes to digital learning. So we thought it might be a good idea to collaborate and maybe just make it so that there's a one-stop shop for all these student guides in the one, or these resources, sorry, in the one place. And we came up with the idea of student guides. So on the EDT website now, there's a page for each individual university and the student intern in that university, in conjunction with the EDTL team member in that university, collated all the resources that university makes available to students. And there's in list format with an explanation of each. So, for example, a lot of universities have their Microsoft Office and Google Office or Google Suite access. And on this page, you can find how to access it and how to download it. But another element of these pages, which I think could be quite useful, is how a lot of the resources that universities create can actually be used across universities. So, for example, UL made a very, very good and very in-depth online learning guide earlier in the year, 
And there's absolutely no reason why students in UCC or UCD shouldn't use this guide for their own information because it contains some wonderful advice on just keeping engaged with online learning and how to contact lecturers, which has an emerging information. So it's, as well as just having a one-stop shop for students in that university, we hope that maybe students across other universities might be able to use some of the wonderful resources that each university has created. Um, so yeah, so those are the two main student-facing resources on the edtl.blog website. But another very important part of the student-facing activities is the EDTL Instagram page, which I'm now going to pass on to Katerina, who's going to speak a bit about that. Perfect. Thanks so much, Rory. So um, I'm going to give you a little glimpse into our Instagram channel and we'll also show you shortly some of the resources that we created. So the Instagram team consists of six students from four different Um, alongside with being part of the nationwide EDTL team, each of us is also involved in projects specific to our universities. So this variety of perspectives and different experiences are the reason why our EDTL Instagram channel flourishes actually. So you can see here a little screen grab um, of the landing page of the Instagram. So we post regularly and we have complete creative control over the content that we share up there. This means everything you see on our feed comes from students and is also student facing. Um, yeah, perfect. So the ethos here that underpins all our content is to create something meaningful and truly helpful, something that we wish someone had shared with us earlier. So we also try to use our channel to interact with our followers and to provide opportunity for them to share their, their own experience. And um, because Sharon mentioned, you know, like there is no student voice, but student and voices um, and including as many as possible is kind of also what we try to do with our Instagram channel. So we do this by asking open ended question in our stories and students can type their answers. We also use little polls which outcome in return inform the direction of our channel. This means basically our channel is more a platform that fosters conversation, a kind of two way conversation closer to a dialogue instead of a monologue. Now let me share some of the resources that are on our channel and um, to give you a little taste. Yeah, here, for example, are some um, example of the examples of the uh, campaigns that we initiated. So here you see um, that was we had one mental health campaign where we dedicated a, a whole week um, to kind of share tips and have kind of a conversation about, you know, how to cope with these like difficult situations that we all um, are, are in. Um, and then on the right, you see a little campaign, also a week long campaign around academic integrity and contract cheating. Um, if you can move on. Perfect. So here um, we did also a little March motivation challenge where each of us, um, including also actually the other team members, not only as Instagram um, team members, but also the other interns, whoever wanted to contribute, shared um, you know, their, their number one advice and as kind of like a part of a challenge and our followers could kind of like do try to like wake up earlier with us on one day or um, whatever, like make a to do list um, for one day. Yeah, perfect. If we can move on. Then another one that was really that was inspired by one of our webinars that we had actually of part as part of the ETL webinar series. I think Ben will talk a little bit more about this later and um, was the inclusivity awareness week. Where we kind of like shared, um, you know, important terms and also stories of actual actually students and um, that are registered with that with the access office. If we can move on again. And yeah, so we also try to kind of seize the specific temporal quality of the academic year and steer our channel accordingly. So for incidents, what you see here when it uh, came closer to midterm, which for many students mean, means exam and essay term, each of us shared tips tailored to different exam types. Here we clearly saw the benefits again of our team consisting of different viewpoints, especially because we ourselves all had different kinds of ex assignments to tackle. Plus, we were also right in the middle of exam time. So this means these resources that you see came, come from an authentic place, again guided by the aim to gather tips that we think are practically useful for students. Um, yeah, here is another example of a series of posts that we created. Here we gave five hacks for successfully navigating various different VLEs and learning interfaces that each of our universities uses. Um, if we can move on. Um, maybe one slide back. 
Perfect. So that's my last slide. And if you're interested, you know, you would love for you to have a look at our channel yourself. So we really wanted to create a safe and welcoming yet informative space for students across all Irish universities to come together and learn from each other. And I'm confident to say actually that we've achieved that on our Instagram team level like on the team level, but also um, we're always really happy to see, you know, new followers joining because that means that we can include someone else in kind of this broader conversation. And we'll share our link at some point also in the in the chat. Thank you so much. Thanks, Cathy. Um, so that gives you a sense of how um, our student interns worked to try and reach out to the student population and you all know how difficult that can be at times and um, so I think they've done a fantastic job and um, I'd like to move on now because um, most of our interns bar Rory um, are based within a particular university well Rory is as well because he's a student in UCC um, but one of the roles that they fulfill is working on projects within their own university. So just to give you a flavor of the type of things that they've been doing, um, and you could multiply this, um, you know, by, by quite a big number actually, because there's so much work going on in each of the universities. It's, um, it's really quite amazing. Um, so Ben is going to tell us a little bit about what he's been doing um, within Trinity and then Michaela and Katharina are going to come back in again and talk a little bit about what's happening in Maynooth. So Ben, would you like to, to come in and talk about what you've been at in, in Trinity College? Yep, sure. Um, so hi everyone. Um, so my name is Ben and I'm a third year student in Trinity. Um, I'm currently studying business and social studies. Um, and so, yeah, like Sharon said, um, as part of our role as EDTL interns, um, you know, we we were involved in a variety of different projects um, between the different universities, but also within our own universities. Um, and the the student as partnership or student as partner kind of emphasis within the EDL, EDTL project has has very much been replicated in my work within Trinity. Um, and, and a large part of my role has been giving student input into a variety of resources or webinars um, that um, that are that are taking place in Trinity. And so one of the main projects that I was involved with for for the majority of of last term was was creating the um, the handbook for for students on hybrid learning, open book assessment, digital assessment. Um, and so with the collaboration from the Trinity academic practice team, um, I was uh, I worked on uh, a variety of different resources um, in, in various different formats to kind of inform and help students get to grips with with digital assessment. Um, and that resulted in it started off as a very small project and um, just a handful of resources here and there. And we, we very quickly realized that, you know, with the the extent of the change and, you know, students were 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 struggling at the time, you know, it was still new to the the digital assessment um, space. We, we, we found that that project actually became quite substantial uh, and it resulted in a, in a handbook um, for students. Um, and then another part of my, my involvement has also been contributing to kind of focus groups and webinars. And um, again, on an emphasis on student, um, the student voice has, or student voices has been that I not only give my own student opinion as a student, but try to, to hear from other students as many as, as possible. And um, so I helped to facilitate some some student um, focus groups and um, particularly on um, digital assessment was a, a particular one uh, and there was no um, no involvement from or there was no um, involvement from kind of staff side of things it was a purely student focused one to kind of help students um, just to make sure that they were kind of comfortable and, and engaged with the the process um, and could give some some honest kind of feedback, which we we, we found really really useful, and brought that in, it that informed our our resources that we created. Um, and then the last thing I just want to mention is our gateway to dig, uh, gateway to digital assessment. So this has been the the big project that I've been working on, um, this term, and that is essentially a a go to website for a variety of different resources, um, the vast majority of which are um, created by students for students. And um, so we not only so I've been contributing, but also we've we've incorporated a lot of other students from from a variety of different years and courses. And um, and the idea is just to have one place where students can go to hopefully and um, that because a lot of the time students aren't exactly sure what resources are available. So this is kind of trying to bring that all together. And um, 
and in terms of just very quickly the benefits that I've seen of the um, of my involvement with the project from a from my own personal opinion I found you know not only my presentation skills uh, but and critical thinking skills have, have developed you know being able to write these resources and really think about what I need from my from my own learning and um, but also I think there's a you know a benefit for the wider student body in that we have a more representative more authentic uh, resources being created um, and staff have been you know extremely welcoming of these um, you know of our opinions and they really want to hear from us which has been really really encouraging and um, so that's just a bit from Trinity uh, I think um, I'm going to pass on to Kathy and Michaela who are going to talk about Manu. Perfect so next slide please. Wonderful. So a big focus in MINUS lies on promoting academic integrity. Um, Michaela and I are part of a working group that's, that consists of us interns. Um, we have another intern, Robin. She's not here today, but she's also part of the group. Um, and also members of the Students' Union, student representatives of each faculty, the postgraduate representative and also educators. Um, are part of this group, so we meet frequently and are working together on raising awareness around academic integrity in all its facets. So reaching from contract cheating to plagiarism and pointing towards all the various support services at Maynooth, such as the Writing Center, Library and so on. We're also currently working on drafting a lecture recording policy with the aim to establish a common practice across departments. Um, last week, we EDTL interns designed a workshop together that we delivered as an interactive training to academic representatives at Maynooth. The aim of this workshop was to, on the one hand, to raise awareness and on the other hand, to get a sense for students' experience with SMLs and other illegal services that are targeting and even blackmailing students to engage in criminal activity through exploiting their, you know, exactly this lack of information. At Maynooth, we work closely with our students' union. So, for example, we did Facebook live streams together, introducing the project and, and all its aims. We also took over the SU Instagram channel and talked about our work and showcased some of our resources. In one of the takeovers, actually, we emphasized the importance of basic digital skills that we often take for granted, namely tips for organizing your desktop and how to back up your data using OneDrive. That's one of the apps that every Maynooth student gets for free as part of the Microsoft Office subscription. So for all our takeovers, we created graphics and videos um, resulting from our interaction with this different set of students beyond our initial reach, the followers of the Students' Union account. And after every takeover then, we created videos showcasing the highlights in order to capture and disseminate the work that we've done. And these videos are also published on our Maynooth internal project website. And I'll pass you over to, uh, to Michaela now. Hi everyone, my name is Michaela and I am one of the three Maynooth University interns. Um, we have Cathy, who you heard from earlier, myself and Robin, who is working with the School of Business. And we're also getting a new intern very soon to represent science and engineering. So it's been brilliant to have this opportunity because I don't think we realised just how much work we've done in Maynooth until we got to reflect and see what we've done what we're currently doing and what we're hoping to do. So I'm going to talk you through some of this work that we've done. And um, so on the next slide, what you can see is. Oops, sorry, I have the links open um, and it's been brilliant to see what everyone else is working on and what everyone else is doing. And um, so we have our critical skills website. So we've worked with a module offered to first years um, to increase their critical thinking skills and literally literary skills and you know just make them successful for first year and getting to know university life. So we have created these pages that are going to go live on the website for students to learn about. So the first one is creating a digital poster or an infographic. The next one is creating a presentation. The next one is general guidelines for voiceovers and the last one is general tips for creating videos. So we've also created some really interesting resources. You can see the three of them there. So the first one is promoting academic integrity, which we shared at our uh, academic rep training. So it's saying, you know, to promote academic integrity, don't devalue your degree, you know, defeat the cheat. And it also links in with what we were doing with our EDTL Instagram work. 
The next slide is the news guide. So the next two are something that Robin worked on with the School of Business. So news guide is a software, an internet um, website tool that you can use to evaluate online resources and it gives you a rating of how trustworthy it is. And the last one that Robin worked on is the radar approach. So it looks great, you know, to navigate the sea of information and switch on your mental radar. So to evaluate online sources for assignments and re research. So next I'm going to talk you through sharing our students perspective. So what we've done is we've given webinars to students who are actually lecturers to MORAG's, our um, project team staff, um, MORAG's module. So it was very funny because the students are staff so it's kind of nice to have that bring that student perspective to them. We've also presented webinars for Maynooth University staff to promote the student perspective. We've hosted question and answer sessions to share digital tools and discuss common issues we've had. And we've also shared supports and resources to students through the SU. So we've had lots of dissemination opportunities and um, these are some examples of our presentations. So our talks um, from all of our, the three interns have been how can lecturers support students and um, how can we have authentic student partnership and what are the benefits and um, our experience of establishing and maintaining student partnership. For example, what Cathy mentioned of our student staff working group for academic integrity and then also resources and supports for students. So my last slide is, so what we've done so far, we have presented our work in ETL student webinars, the EdTech Winter Conference, CONAL, UCD Library Staff Day, the NUIG Inclusive Learning Conference, and this. So thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you, Michaela. Um, so that gives you a sense, at least, of some of the activity that's been going on within each of the universities. But then as well, the students also come together at a, a project level and um, you've seen some of their student facing activities. So just to move on to some staff facing activities as well. Um, and we're going to look at two different areas. One is the newsletter. And I mentioned that Vish was the first editor of the newsletter, which was was taken on by by Rory since he started. And then Ben is going to talk a little bit about um, our student led webinars and resources, which um, which Rory has mentioned earlier. So Rory, do you want to talk a bit about the newsletter? Perfect. Thanks, Sharon. Yeah, so as Sharon mentioned, I took over um, as editor in chief, I suppose, with the newsletter from Vish and Vish being a journalism student and myself a mere computer science student meant I had big boots to fill, but um, it's going it's going well anyway, I think. So it's hard to believe it's been, I think, 18 months now since the first issue of the newsletter was released. And I think looking back 18 months ago, it will be impossible to predict the direction in which the newsletter went. The, the world where the first newsletter went out and was so different than even looking back at the articles that were included. Um, compared to what we what we write about today, it's just so radically different. You know, I mean, if you looked back 18 months ago and thought you might be writing about something like how you can how you can conduct exams remotely, I think you'd never believe it. So in the, it's interesting to look back at that. So yeah, so I took over the role when I joined the EDTL team, and I must say, working on the newsletter has, has been a brilliant part of the experience so far. It's always just very interesting, kind of getting in contact with the different stakeholders across universities in Ireland, asking them if they've anything to contribute as well as seeking out contributions from EDTL team members who are always working on something interesting as well, it's fair to say, I think. So the general idea behind the newsletter will be to provide subscribers, and subscribers are generally university staff across Ireland, just with a glimpse into university life in Ireland, as well as actionable tips and insights into their own teaching, and just some interesting think pieces as well. So just to give you a flavour of what we've covered over the last year, we had an in-depth look in, into remote proctoring with Tom O'Mara contributed to that in UCC, the head of digital experience there, I think, and just looking at the pros and cons of proctoring. Uh, we also had a PhD student from UCD talk about how to make technology more accessible for access students in universities in Ireland. And as well as that, we try and get student interns to contribute regularly. So we'd have written a few articles just on what we're finding good about online learning in general, and what we think going forward might be worth improving online learning. So we like to think that we cover a lot of bases just in terms of making sure there's something there for everyone in at least 
one issue. So if you go onto the EDT website, which is edtl.blog, you'll be able to log in and you'll be able to see the, our archive of newsletters. So as I said, we've nearly 18 months worth now. So there's a good deal of reading there. And a lot of it is kind of timeless, interest, interesting tip sheets and stuff. And going forward on the EDT website as well, there's an opportunity to subscribe and you'll get them in your inbox. So yeah, so just as you can see on the website, that would just be a, or on the slide, sorry, that's a picture of our latest newsletter where EDTL member Kleena O'Callaghan wrote about the Egg Kind series of talks in ECC, which some of you might have seen, where they get, where they just have a brief conversation with staff members in ECC about their own experiences. And there's the piece I mentioned about the PhD researcher who's looking at making higher education more accessible to use technology for active students. So that's giving you a flavour of the newsletter, which I think is always seems to get good feedback, just going off what I see on Twitter and other feedback forums as well. So yeah, I'll just like hand back to Sharon there now as well. Thanks, Rory. And I have to say, you know, um, the the newsletter takes very, very little input from me at all. Um, Vish may have been a journalism student, but but Rory has certainly um, taken up the, the reins and has run with it. So um, I never have any worries about the, the newsletter coming out and, and it'll be packed full of um, interesting um, articles. Um, Ben, one of the other things that the interns um, have been doing is um, running some student-led webinars as part of our, our series. So do you want to speak a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, the, the student-led webinars have been a, a really, a really interesting and really valuable part of the EDTL project, at least from, from my own perspective. It's been really interesting to, to talk to staff in a variety of different universities. Um, and and just to give a sense of you know what the students or what we are thinking about a particular topic. So so how that work how it works is um, you know a few weeks in advance um, amongst the student interns we will decide on a topic. Um, usually you know these topics uh, as you can see we have a few there and um, student collaboration and group work or the student perspective on on remote assessment. You know they're extremely relevant to our own experience um, and they're often quite you know. Um, there's lots of different opinions and and they can be quite um, interesting to discuss. Um, and so we come together um, all online and collaborate to make a presentation and, um, you know, dividing up the different topics, making sure everyone is is covering all the bases. And, and um, as we've kind of mentioned, you know, none of us have met in person before. And, and we see this um, in particular, the student led webinars as a really um, excellent example of, of online student collaboration at its you know working as it should and um, you know we end up with we we think you know quite coherent and um useful for useful presentations you know the, the response is always quite quite positive from from them uh, and i we think it just you know it's a perfect or it's a it's a very strong example of of what could happen with assessments and um, you know there's been a lot of difficulties trans um, translating group assessments to the online context um, but we think that, you know, it is it is feasible um, from 10 different students in different years, different courses. And um, we are manage, managing quite successfully to be able to, to bring one kind of final product together. Um, and I think the the, the digital school, the digital skills and, and tools that we've we've kind of promoted through the project, we've used ourselves such as, you know, PowerPoint and, and Google Docs and things and um, to kind of to do those webinars. Um, uh, as as has been mentioned, the webinars kind of take place every second Monday, and a student-led webinar, you know, is, is usually every every few weeks or so. And um, it's an excellent opportunity for staff to ask students questions. Um, and you know, uh, we may not always agree on on the the different perspectives, just based on our different um, disciplines. You know, some students have preferences for other, like for certain. Um, maybe if tutorials were to be held online or in person or group projects. But I think that actually really adds to the, the feedback that we, we can give to, to staff because it is so varied. And um, so you get more of um, not just the student voice, but student voices like we were mentioning earlier. Um, and then also just briefly, we've kind of mentioned it um, earlier on. We do have student resources that we create um, and they are promoted through our EDTL web page. They're also promoted to our Instagram. Um, and like we've mentioned, those are kind of related to the, the webinars or just to topics that we feel um, students um, are, 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 you know, they're, they're looking for, they need more information on. Um, so yeah, that's just a really quick um, overview of our student webinars. Thanks, Ben. And, and just to note that all of our webinars are recorded and they are available openly under a Creative Commons license from 
that um, that website that you can see and um, the URL that you can see on that slide. Um, Ben, I'm going to ask you as well to say something about um, our recent campaign. Um, one of the things that our project committed to this year was supporting conversations about what teaching and learning might look like post COVID. And we knew that getting the student voice was a very important part of that. So um, just two weeks ago, we launched um, a, a campaign called Your Education, Your Voice, Your Vision. And I'm going to let Ben explain a little bit more because I'm I'm getting old at this stage. I, I can almost sign up for my COVID vaccine at this stage, which will give you a sense of how old I am. But uh, but Ben is in a much better position to talk a little bit about it. Um, yeah, sure. So um, so our our social media campaign has been has been really, really exciting um, and an amazing opportunity, something that I, I never would have expected from this role. And I'm sure the other interns are the same. But essentially what it is has been um, a two week campaign on, on a variety of social media platforms, asking students what their ideal learning experience would look like. And, you know, we've seen over the past 18 months that there's been a real focus on kind of firefighting, essentially, you know, getting through the issues that are cropping up at the moment. Um, and then also there's been a lot of focus on what will the future look like? But that has been a very um, kind of looking at the process of what are the steps that we need um, to do to get to that stage. We kind of wanted to move away from that. We wanted to look at a more aspirational kind of idealized version of what students wanted their learning experience to look like. So how that worked was we had um, social media uh, advertisements going out to a variety of, of um, social media platforms where students got the opportunity to fill out polls and um, asking them what their experience would look like. So some of the questions included um, what would your online or what would your lectures look like in an ideal world? Would they be online or in person? Um, what would your tutorials look like? What would assessment look like? Um, so we were trying to get a sense of of, of what students think, um, what students would like from their online or from just from their learning experience general. This is a post COVID uh, ideal world where, you know, we can have a balance um, between an online and in person um, uh, experience if that's what students want. Um, and it's been really important to get some um, some data on this subject because, you know, we really wanted to be able to go to the universities and, and kind of state, you know, this is what students want um, and we needed some evidence for that. So that's what we hoped hope to do. And um, we also try to make it as you know, informative and in, or engaging and interesting. So um, the the few interns kind of tried out their hand at acting and, and were, were our, you know, and the face of the campaign, if you like, and, and really made it student centred and, and interesting. Um, and it's been very interesting hearing from, you know, friends and, and, and other people in our university saying, you know, why are you appearing on my Instagram ads and things like that? But but it, it's been really useful. And, and that shows the, the the scale and the scope of of our um, of our project. It's, it's concluded um, last week and we're hope, you know, we're, we're going to be looking to, to publish the results and um, kind of very soon. Um, I think that's yeah, that's that's kind of it. And it's just been really interesting to, like I said, kind of bring a bit of positivity and a bit of um, aspirations, um, especially kind of towards the end of the year. It's been a, a difficult year for, for staff and students alike. So this we think, or at least I think, has been a nice, positive and um, exciting end to, to the academic year. Thanks a million, Ben. So as Ben said, we're hoping that we'll have the initial results of that already. Um, ready to talk about really quite soon. So that brings us to the end of the, the presentation. I'm going to stop sharing just now so that I can see everybody again. Um, and hopefully uh, we've managed to keep to time. But again, thank you so much, Karina, for um, for inviting us and hosting us today. Oh, thank you so much, Sharon, and the student team. You're amazing, all of you. The work you've done in such a short space of time with Sharon is incredible. And it was fantastic that you were able to set up this model where you had the student partnership approach. I just think it's telling a story for every higher education institute in Ireland, the value of student partners and the valuable role you can play. Um, and how many hours were you on the project per week? Just remind me how many. Was it it's, a full time um, or a part time role? It's a part time role. So it's it's approximately 15 hours a week or 60 hours a month and the the students can spread that according to their timetable because obviously being students they yeah. have have particular pressure points during the year so 
Um, so yeah, approximately 60 hours a month. 60 hours a month. Okay, wow. So well done, um, fabulous outputs. But isn't it wonderful work experience as well? And just thinking of employability and the story you can tell when you go out there looking for jobs. Um, we certainly have um, lots of opportunities here in GMIT for our students for different initiatives that we run. But um, I haven't seen something like this before, which is tied into a project directly. And it's fantastic. It's given me lots of ideas. I'll be back on to you, Sharon. <laughs> I, I know you will, Karina. <laughs> I'll be thinking of the finance model of this. How can we support it? But um, it's it's brilliant. And so much you've shared. I'm just interested as well in the handbook. Um, was it Ben that talked about the handbook with the open book exams? Did you find that challenging as a student to put together? Um, or I suppose you mentioned that you worked with the academic practice group. or the, Was that the teaching and learning group within TCD? Um, so as a partnership together, was that, yeah. Um, did you find it challenging, Ben, or, you know, working through perhaps the language that's used in assessment? Or did you take it, your interpretation of all of this and um, turn it into something readable and understandable to the students? <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, and I think it's probably a, a common kind of, challenge from the student interns has been you know just making a kind of reassuring ourselves that you know um kind of your contributions are are, are equal and that's just natural and you know all of our, our team members have been extremely welcoming of our our feedback but particularly for that handbook um yes a lot of the the, the research would be very academic wording and, and the terminology terminologies just aren't things that students would be aware of and um, like formative and summative assessment is always the one I go to because that's that's seen a lot even in the resources that students that are made for students but students a lot of the time wouldn't know what that means so we did kind of I acted almost like a translator and and the the academic practice team who are who create these resources in Trinity were kind of you know always very aware of making sure that it didn't sound too um academic essentially and it was it was readable and understandable and and that also was done through the formats we made we made them in so we did a lot of videos we did a lot of instagram and um, to make it more accessible for students and really so that they would they would want to read it yeah and i really like i just had a click in with the on the website there the digital assessment um menu of options and was it pauline rooney did she work with you on that i saw something came through there recently she had shared through a, a network so that's another fabulous resource that's um I'm I'm I must link that into our resources and our own digital ed platform because I like the way they're categorized. Um it's really, really useful. So listen, thanks a million. I don't know, does anybody have questions? Um loads of comments coming in here. You know, you're a credit to your colleges that you all come from and um you know fair play to you, Sharon. It's a fantastic initiative on your project to have instigated this, you know. I know yours is very student focused, um, which is incredible, but it's given us lots of food for thought. It's something the I know project doesn't have that theme or that work package that you had, but I can see such value in it. It's incredible. So uh, we can certainly learn from from this. Um, so amazing work people are just saying. So well done. And great example of co-creation. Um, and I'm certainly uh, going to reach out to our past leaders and our civic engagement leaders in GMIT to look at focus groups and let's empower them to run these focus groups and uh, feedback, you know, how their experience has gone this year. But that social ma media campaign is really valuable. So thanks. That's great that it's covering the whole of Ireland. <clears throat> I'm sure we'll all benefit from that. So listen, thanks a million.